Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about frequency division multiplexing and also we are going to discuss about the classification of multiplexing and we will see how the different user channels or n number of user channels are multiplexed using frequency. So this is the theme of this particular video. So before getting into FDM that is frequency division multiplexing, we will see what are the types of multiplexing available? So, multiplexing. See, when I have n number of users, I want to utilize a single channel to transmit n number of users' signal simultaneously. I will be going for a scheme called multiplexing. There are two types of multiplexing. Uh, broadly, we can classify. One is analog and another one is called digital multiplexing scheme. So, when it comes to analog uh, multiplexing, we used to go for frequency division multiplexing and wavelength division multiplexing. And when we talk about digital multiplexing, we talk about TDM. That is the reason why in my previous uh, TDM video, I talked about uh, all the applications uh, of TDM are relevant to data communication, di that to digital data communication, digital telephony and etc. etc. Okay. So, when it comes to analog multiplexing, I should use FDM or WDM. So, we will see what are the categories of multiplexing, frequency division multiplexing. So, here each signal is going to be having a different frequency slot or frequency channel. Wavelength division multiplexing, here each signal from a different user is going to be multiplexed by a particular wavelength. Okay. So, this scheme is utilized in optical fiber systems okay. and uh, time division multiplexing. So, time division multiplexing, yes. Uh, we have different methodologies, the basic time division multiplexing and synchronous TDM and statistical time division multiplexing. So, these are the classifications of time division multiplexing. So, in synchronous TDM, each signal is assigned a fixed time slot in a fixed rotation, very simple. So, the commutator will have a fixed rotation and fixed time slot. So, nothing is going to be changed. So, after your user signal, I am going to send a synchronization pulse, that is it. So, in statistical time division multiplexing, the time slots are reused. Okay. So, now we will get into frequency division multiplexing. So, this is the ultimate aim of this particular video. So, we are going to discuss in depth about FDM. So, frequency division multiplexing is a multiplexing technique okay, that uses different frequencies to combine multiple streams of data from transmission over a communication medium. So, for example, uh, my ultimate aim is I am having different, uh, you know what, like communication channel. Okay. It can be a voice channel or it can be a video channel or it can be a normal data transmission from a different uh, user, right. So, in this diagram you can see there are three, uh, you know what, like input channels are available. I need to multiplex this three and I want to transmit these three over a single communication channel. But here the single communication channel is divided into sub channels, ok. So, this is the ultimate concept behind FDM, ok. So, now FDM what it is going to do? So, FDM assigns a discrete carrier frequency to each data stream and then combines many modulated carrier frequencies for the transmission. It is very simple. So, what I am going to do at the end of the day, I am going to send a composite or combined uh, frequency band of signals over my channel. Okay. So, in FDM signals, so in FDM the signals are generated by sending device uh, which is going to uh, use different carrier frequencies for modulation. Okay. So, now these modulated signals are again as I told you combined into a single composite signal and then it is transmitted over a link. So, at the receiver side these carrier frequencies are separated uh, and based upon the bandwidth it is separated at the receiver end. Okay. So, now what is the ultimate uh, uh, method of FDM is very simple. I have channel 1, okay. I have channel 2 and I have channel 3. Let us assume I am having 3 channels and each channel frequency is transmitted or combined over my link, but each frequency is separated by guard bands, okay, so that I may not be getting inter symbol interference, because uh, these frequency slots are framed in such a way that it is going to take nearby frequencies, okay. So, in such case we need guard bands, okay. So, that is what is given in this particular slide. So, the channels can be separated by the strip of unused bandwidth. So, these bands are called guard bands, okay. So, uh, in this particular, uh, you know what, like a diagram, we are going to see uh, 
three voice channels are multiplexed uh, over FDM concept and here the entire bandwidth or the entire link is divided into three sub channels okay and here FDM is used in AM, FM and PM modulation so FDM uh, obviously it has to use modulation scheme so for example the television transmitter uses FDM to broadcast several channels at once okay so FM radio which combines many frequencies into one channel this is a significant uh, you know what like uh, application of FDM so now so how this multipli uh, multiplexing process is done so in the uh, diagram right uh, what we are going to see here is uh, the conceptual illustration of multiplexing process okay so each source generates a signal of similar frequency range so inside the multiplexer these uh, similar signals uh, are modulated with different carrier frequency so you can see here I can have f1 is my carrier frequency f2 is my carrier frequency and f3 is my carrier frequency you can see here I am getting signal from channel 1 channel 2 and channel 3 so channel 1 channel 2 channel 3 is going to have its own bandwidth but when I am going to send it uh, right when I am going to do multiplexing operation what I am going to do for channel 1 I am going to use different frequency and channel 2 I am going to use different carrier frequency and channel 3 I am going to use different carrier frequency so that when I am going to combine all these three frequencies it is not going to overlap with each other okay so now in this diagram you can see very clearly right so the carrier 1 is a low frequency uh, the carrier 2 is a slightly higher frequency and the carrier 3 is the very high frequency right so it is very easy for me to combine all these three frequencies at the transmitter unit and send it through the channel at the receiver side I can easily reconstruct or retrieve the original signal back because I am using different carrier frequencies ok so this is the ultimate you know what like uh, uh, concept behind FDM process ok so what is the demultiplexing process so the demultiplexer yes it is going to do the reverse operation so I am going to use uh, some series of filters ok it is very simple ok so yes this diagram shows the demultiplication uh, demultiplexing uh, process of FDM see you can see the uh, data received through the channel or the analogous uh, signal I am receiving through the channel it is fed to a demultiplexer and it is going to use different range of filters ok so let us assume I am having a uh, low pass filter and I am going to have a mid uh, frequency filter and I am going to have a high frequency uh, kind of a filter what I am going to do use here is uh, for example my first filter is going to filter uh, all high frequencies the second filter is going to filter low frequency and high frequency and third fi uh, filter is go uh, going to filter uh, low frequency and mid frequency so that what happens here right so I can easily able to reconstruct my channel 1 channel 2 and channel 3 because channel 1 is having low frequency so uh, if I use a low pass filter it is going to uh, filter high frequency and mid frequency very easily right this is the concept behind demultiplexing process of FDM very simple guys ok so I sent three different frequencies over channel uh, choosing a appropriate filter you can retrieve the original signal back at the receiver end and as usual you can give this to the user channel at the receiver side ok so this is the process of demultiplexing with FDM ok yes so what I am going to do or what we are going to do now is we are going to take a example and we are going to see how we can do this FDM ok conceptually so yes uh, example number one we are going to do now so assume that the voice channel occupies a bandwidth of 4 kilohertz so uh, one user voice channel is going to have 4 kilohertz of bandwidth so let's take an example like it's a user voice ok I am talking so generally human voice ranges between 0 to 400 kilo 400 sorry 0 to 4000 hertz or 0 to 4 kilohertz ok so let it be like I am having a multiple user voice channels ok and we need to combine three voice channels into a link ok with a bandwidth of 12 kilohertz now my channel capacity is 12 kilohertz ok and uh, the uh, channel starts between 20 to 32 kilohertz ok so the entire channel it is going to start from 20 kilohertz and it is going to end with 32 kilohertz ok and I am having three you know what like user voice channels okay so how to do this okay so this is how we can do this problem okay so you can see at the center side I have three channels so each user is going to have four kilohertz of frequency so for user one I can give the frequency slot of 20 to 24 so as I told you I can start with 20 and I can end with 
32 that is going to be my entire slot so 20 to 32 so that i can have the link bandwidth of 12 kilohertz okay so for uh, user one so here there is no god frequency concept is given so if for our user one 20 to 24 is given for user two 24 to 28 is given for user 3 28 to 32 frequency slot is given all together i can send totally 3 user signal on my 12 kilohertz channel so my first 4 kilohertz will take user 1 channel my second uh, 4 kilohertz will take user 2 and third uh, 4 kilohertz will take user 3 channel so this is called fdm so at the receiver side what i am going to use i am going to use an appropriate filter uh, so that i can retrieve all my data back i can retrieve all my user voice signal back okay so this is the concept behind your fdm okay so yes that's it guys so that's it uh, that's it for this particular video yeah uh, thank you